A few weeks ago, I went from this, my trusty Apple Watch, which between this one, the Series 7, and my previous Series 3, I'd been using for about five years. And now I am on to this. This is the Garmin Phoenix 7. So three weeks in, how am I getting on having taken the leap from this, the lovely Apple Watch, to this, the lovely Garmin Phoenix 7? Let's find out. So as I mentioned in the intro three weeks ago, I made that leap of faith. I put aside my trusty Apple Watch, which had been my go-to companion for my iPhone 15 Pro and strapped on a Garmin Phoenix 7. The main reason why I wanted to make the change was because after I finished my first half marathon, which if you didn't see that video, check it out there, the battery life on the Apple Watch was at 15%. That's 15% having started at 100 about two and a half hours earlier. Now I'm aiming to do much longer runs than this in the future, but if I'm tracking my workout, then the battery life on the Apple Watch just isn't going to cut it. So after some extensive research into which watch I went, I opted for the standard Garmin Phoenix 7. I'm not going to give you all of the features of this watch in this video because I've not had it for that long and I'd like to do a full review on this after I've used it for some time. So stay tuned to the channel for that video. Now I have used Garmin watches in the past and have reviewed them on the channel so I'm not unfamiliar with those watches. It ended up being a straight shootout between the Garmin Phoenix 7 and the Forerunner 265 and because I managed to get this at a really good price lower than the 265 opted for this one. The 47 millimeter case size in silver standard edition with the graphite band. Now the Apple Watch, almost like the right hand of the iPhone. They just get each other. Notifications, apps, Siri, you name it. But what happens when you add a third wheel into this harmonious relationship that's going to take the place of the Apple Watch? First up, notifications. With the Apple Watch, it's a seamless flow of information texts, calls, emails, they just all appear on my watch and they're all mostly all interactive. I can delete, respond and initiate all from the Apple Watch. But with the Garmin, it's a bit like going from a private chat to a group text. You get the messages, but it's not quite as personal or interactive. While people mock and criticize Apple for having hardware that just works and interacts seamlessly with each other, giving you, the user, that sense of needing to be in the ecosystem to have that better unified experience, I'm not one that thinks Apple should share that unique quality that makes that ecosystem so popular with every piece of tech out there. Then it would just be less special. I'm not too fussed about it, to be honest. I knew that before I got this, there would be some drawbacks about moving to the Phoenix 7 and taking that one step out of the Apple ecosystem. If I want a better smartphone, smartwatch experience, I'll get an Apple Watch. But because I want something else that this Apple Watch can't give me, I've had to make that sacrifice in order to get those specific features that I want. And that's fine. Then there's the apps as well. Apple's App Store ecosystem is filled with apps that work in perfect harmony. Some may be good and some bad. While on the Garmin side, while the apps are robust, it's more like a well-tended allotment. You've got everything you need, but you may have to dig a little. When it comes to sports and fitness, the Garmin Phoenix 7 is like an Olympic athlete and the Apple Watch Series 7 is more like a gym enthusiast. The Phoenix 7's GPS accuracy, battery life and rugged build quality make it the Iron Man of the sports watches. However, we can't forget that the Apple Watch Series 7 is a titan of the smartwatch. Its integration with the iPhone is unparalleled and with its ease of use is second to none. It's like having a mini iPhone on your wrist. And obviously when I say the Series 7, obviously I'm talking about all of the Apple Watch series of watches. It's just that I've got the Series 7 with me now. Garmin Phoenix 7 excels as a sport watch with its robust build, superior battery life and its specialized training features. It's particularly suited for outdoor and fitness enthusiasts who need a durable and reliable device that has the battery life to cater for those pursuits. While on the other hand, the Apple Watch series of watches shines as a smartwatch with its large display, fast charging and deep integration within the Apple ecosystem. It's ideal for users who prioritize connectivity, health features, and a seamless experience with their iPhone and other Apple devices. Both watches offer unique strengths, so the choice between them will depend on your own specific needs and preferences. Having used this now for a few weeks, the biggest difference for my use case is the battery life. While I would probably stretch to one day's use out of the Series 7, needing to charge it again overnight, every night, while on the Phoenix 7, on a full charge, it can last for up to 18 days in smartwatch mode. 
And that's just with this standard edition. It can last for up to 57 hours in GPS mode, which means for me, there's not going to be any long activity that I do that I can't track on this watch. I can start an activity and the watch lets me know that in this mode, with the current battery life, this is how long you'll get before the battery dies. The Garmin Phoenix 7 and other sport watches with long battery lives, and that includes the Apple Watch Ultra, stand out for the extended battery life, especially in outdoor and sports settings, reducing that need for frequent charging. And it's that feature primarily that makes the Phoenix 7 a strong choice for athletes and adventurers who require long lasting performance together with the reliable navigation sensors and the ability to often work without the total reliance of one of these, like the Apple Watch does. And because of that better battery life, I've been able to finally do some sleep tracking without having to worry about waking up to a dead watch, which has actually happened in the past. In this video, I focused on how the Apple Watch activity rings were one of the main reasons as to why I'm in this position right now, where I am fitter, healthier, and happier. But those recent experiences with the battery life of the Series 7 meant that I've needed to find an alternative that wasn't the expensive Apple Watch Ultra. The Apple Watch's activity rings are excellent for users who want a simple, motivating and integrated way to track their daily activity and for me it got me on that path while on the other hand the Garmin's activity tracking offers more depth and customization which may be preferred choice of people who are more focused on detailed fitness metrics and performance tracking but both systems have their merits and the choice between them will obviously depend on your personal fitness goals and preferences for me, in this moment right now, the Garmin approach is best for me. So what's the verdict? If your life revolves around fitness, the Garmin Phoenix 7 might be your new best friend. But if you can't live without the Apple ecosystem, then you just might want to stick with the Apple Watch. What do you think about my Switch? Would you trade your Apple Watch for a Garmin? Or have you already done it? Are you, how are you getting on? Just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.